I think it'd be better if I got started a little early. Uh, so let me just make a few comments. Uh, good afternoon, and thanks for coming. We have a stellar set of speakers today, all of which have published on insect biodiversity loss or biodiversity loss on an even grander scale. We have uh, Dr. Peter Raven here today, uh, runs the Missouri Botanical Garden and uh, many other things, and he'll uh, be one of our three National Academy scientists uh, that are part of the symposium. Before we start, I want to acknowledge the interest and support we received from the ESA headquarters, the program committee, and especially Rada Krell, and ESA staff member Joe Romanecki and uh, Becky, Becky Anthony also helped a great deal. Uh, but much of the impetus for the symposium actually came from Chris Stilzig early on uh, back in January. Chris is the incoming executive director, and we also had a lot of help from ESA leadership, uh, especially uh, Robert Patterson, or Peterson, uh, who's our 2019 ESA president. The entire session's gonna be taped, so all the slides will be made available uh, through the ESA website. Uh, I don't know how long that's gonna take. It's gonna be professionally spliced together, so it's gonna take a little bit of editing. Uh, there's a number of journalists here today, uh, people doing stories for popular science, science news, uh, Nat Geo, a couple book projects. Brooke Jarvis, who did the piece uh, for the New York Times Magazine, is here working on her book, and Oliver Millman's working on a book uh, for The Guardian. If you're a journalist and do not yet have a press packet, come see Chris Stelzig. Chris, where are you? Um, He's going to be sitting down there uh, at some point. So if you're a journalist and don't have a, a press packet, um, uh, uh, please check in with him. So in terms of the insect decline matter, I call it a phenomenon because uh, there's uh, many different reports of downward insect diversity, abundance, biomass, ranges. Uh, these, dec these declines are cutting across taxon, they're cutting across ecological guilds. Uh, they involve aerial, ground dwelling, and aquatic insects, parasitoids, predators, what have you, and they extend from the Arctic uh, to the Neotropics. And w one thing that really distinguishes wh why we're here today uh, from other conservation biodiversity issues, oftentimes we're worried about rare species, and that's what many conservation biologists do, but this is different. Uh, we're, we're actually looking at the decline of common species, things that are like the nodes of food webs, things that provide many of the ecosystem services that we, we value. So it's really in a, a different sort of focus and concern. Uh, we, we heard stories or reports about insect decline from Jeremy Thomas going back to 1990. Uh, but maybe we all started paying a little more attention with a paper that came out in Science by Rodolfo Durzo talking about uh, defaunation in the Anthropocene, and he was looking at the decline of uh, vertebrates and invertebrates and other taxa, and it turned out that insects were not doing very well. 67% uh, of the monitored invertebrates showed a 45% mean decline in 40 years. Not good. I think. Mostly that was relevant to us, the scientific community. Uh, it wasn't until uh, Hallman in 2017 reported a 75% decline in, in biomass, flying insect biomass, that we really got the attention of others outside of our world. And that was a, a wake-up call for sure. Book Jarvis's uh, article in the New York Times probably brought the message to the greatest audience in terms of people that weren't scientists or uh, bug lovers of any sort and were, really got the attention of uh, economists, uh, ag people in agriculture, people who just love bees, uh, any farmer that was reliant on pollination services. So what we're gonna do today is just report on the current state of knowledge, uh, share what we know and especially what we don't know uh, look at some of the studies and stressors and close with things that we might want to do about this problem.